So thank you for joining the webinar. In the next 15 minutes or so, we will see the wonderful world of using Word more efficiently. Word has been there since three decades. I am sure you recognize these icons. It has evolved over time. This is a series of webinars which I am doing across Office 365. Today is Word and we will cover other topics as we go along. There's a quick introduction of what I do. I'm not going to read it out, just go through it quickly. Coming to Word, although we have been using it for a long time, we don't really know its structure, so let me explain. Technically, the document is called a story. That's okay. Section is what most people don't know about. And what is there to know about is that pages are inside sections. So when we create a document, Word creates a section, then puts the page inside and then we add more pages. So practically speaking, all our documents have only one section, unless you add it manually, which we have probably never done. So pages is what we populate with the content, which we type or copy paste. Another important thing is Word is very good with formatting. We should not be doing formatting. We should be asking Word to do for which styles are available and styles is another thing we will cover today. Now let's go to one common problem. I have a long document. This table needs to be in landscape. It needs a separate page which is in landscape. Typically, if we try to go and change the landscape everywhere, all pages change to landscape. Why is that happening? Because landscape is a page level attribute, but pages are contained in sections. So it's actually a section level attribute. In order to illustrate this, I have shown the section number here. Usually you don't see the section number here. Where do you see the section number? You right click on the status bar at the bottom and then we will see what to do. When you right click on the status bar, you see section. This is off by default, switch it on. Then what will happen at the bottom next to page, you will see section. Obviously, right now it is section one. So what we really need to do is add a section above and below this particular table, but not just a section, a new page as well. So click just above the table. How do you add a new section and a new page? You go to breaks. Typically, we add a new page. If you do this, we are adding a new page and a new section. So now this goes on a separate page. This is the section above the table. Similarly, add another section below the table. So now we have pages before this section one. This is section two and this onwards is section three. So now that this particular page has its own section, now we can go and change the layout by going to orientation, landscape, and that's exactly what we wanted. Bottom line, whenever we want to change anything at page layout level or header footers for one or more pages, they need to be in their own separate section. Another thing which is very nice and not used properly is branding. Colors, fonts and styles are used for corporate branding. We typically create branded presentation templates, but we don't incorporate those into Word. So Office has something called themes, which has 10 colors, two fonts and styles, which can be combined into a theme file. Once you use the theme file across Word, Excel, PowerPoint, all the documents look branded and it enhances your marketing. Very often we reuse content across Word documents. I have a document open. I remember I have done something similar, that paragraph, that table. I want it from an old document. So you go finding that document, then find the correct place, copy paste into new one. In order to avoid this kind of copy paste, lot of reuse capabilities already there in the insert menu of Word. So these ones which I have highlighted in blue are where reuse is possible. For example, very often I have to put my profile 
in various documents. So I went to one document, selected my profile and said, save selection to quick part gallery. Now I get a list here. Similarly, you create a cover page, add it to cover page gallery. You have a reusable table, add it to tables gallery. So in one click, I can use the content and populate. Something similar happens across files with search involved, insert from file. This is a comparatively new feature. You may not see it in your version of Word unless it's updated, but the concept is good. You search for a word, it shows you all the files in your OneDrive. Now you can choose what kind of component you are looking for. Pictures, table, chart, smart art. Choose the correct file, then choose pictures or tables or charts and then insert it directly. You don't have to open those files individually. For example, very often we create financial statements in Excel, but the report goes in Word. So I have opened Excel files here and I'm only looking for Excel tables. If I find this table relevant, I'll just say insert table and it's a part of Word now. So try this out. AI is in, in, introduced in all products, including Word. And one of the important things which we have not probably noticed is how good Word has become at things beyond spelling and grammar. So this is something which is a simple document. This is on browser. Why am I showing it on browser? Because on browser, you will get a button called ideas in home tab. You may see this button on your local word as well, desktop version, if you have the latest version. Even if you don't have the latest version of word, you will be able to see it on word online. So save the file on OneDrive, open it on browser. And then this is called ideas is basically refining your writing beyond spelling and grammar. So if you click on each one of them, it will give you suggestions. Let me show this to you in action. So this is a document. Let me zoom in. And here on home tab, I don't have ideas, but notice what is happening here. If I go to file menu, options, spelling and grammar, proofing, grammar and refinement settings. Here, this list has suddenly grown. There are 100 plus things which this guy is managing. Unfortunately, these checkboxes are not enabled even if you have the new version. So go and check it out. Notice it's not just looking at grammar. It's looking at vocabulary. It's using at misusing words, profanity, embarrassing words, all kinds of things. So let me show you some examples. So now when I go to references, sorry, review, it says check document and then it gives you similar things here. So now it's going through and it is giving me 38 different items. For example, this should be master's degree rather than master degree. India won the prize, yes, but you can't have exclamation and dot both together. Like that, each one of them is directly contextually available or available through this thing called editor. For example, what's wrong with this? Very hot. Notice it's giving you better vocabulary. Extremely hot, ridiculously hot, or just say hot, don't complicate matters. So try this out. It's a very powerful and useful thing. It elevates your writing. I don't expect you to do it for every document you write, but at least for key proposals, persuasive documents, resumes, project reports, Definitely, this is worth it. So these are the different options. Go through them, enable them and try it out. Another important thing is smart lookup and research. Smart lookup means lookup, but it does local file lookup plus web lookup and pictures lookup. It by default gives you creative commons only. The other place is you are doing some research, you want authoritative articles, conference, web page references. So how do you insert references in your page? How is that done? You select a word, click on researcher, it will give you references and then you add the references as citations in your word document and then it will even create a bibliography. 
bibliography formats are different depending on where you are publishing your research. All those formats are supported. Now when it comes to sharing documents traditionally we were using attachments which obviously is bad because you lose control and too many copies get created. Sharing a link is better. So there are two ways of sharing a link. Both methods are relevant. You choose the one depending on circumstances. If you want the document to be shared with someone and they should look at the whole document then sharing a link from here is better. There is a share button on top right corner. Person gets the link, clicks on the document, the first page opens, they can go through it. If you have allowed editing, they can edit it as well. Sometimes what happens, you don't want that person to really go through the whole document. They can, but you want inputs for a specific paragraph. So go to that paragraph, right click and choose comments or mention. Then specify the name of the person and then click send. At this stage, Word understands that this document is not yet shared with that person. So it offers to share it. Same kind of link goes to the other person. Clicks on the link, the document opens, all same. The difference is when the document opens, it will scroll to that particular place so that they can give focused contextual input. That's the idea. Both options are available to you. Choose depending on requirements. Dictation is also available now which is much more precise. It uses AI to convert your voice to text. There are a lot of languages. These are getting added. Many times the English dictation didn't work because of different accents. So now it understands Indian accent as well. So try it out. Now let me show you what styles are. Styles are a way to make Word format the document rather than you formatting the document. For example, when I open a document, whatever I type looks like this. Then it is up to me to make it look different. For example, I want this to become a title. I am not going to manually increase the font size and all that. That's not my job. That is Word's job. Your job is to tell Word, make it look like a title. Same way headings or topics are heading one subtopic is heading 2 and so on and so forth. So while you are writing the document obviously you know which part is regular text, which part is topic or subtopic. Up to 9 levels of headings are available. What is the benefit of doing this? First your manual formatting effort is 0 and then when you navigate the document you go to view, go to navigation pane. When you go to navigation pane you see a live table of contents and because this is a live table of contents you can click to move to any place quickly no scrolling no find next find next that's not all this is just the beginning look at the structure summary should be at the bottom but i happen to write it in this order no worries just drag drop so you can actually rearrange your document after writing it or at any point of time without worrying zero copy paste, zero scrolling, zero selection. And if you have customized your quick access toolbar, you right click here customize, you can add a very nice button here called send to PowerPoint which I will show you later. One last thing here, sometimes we need numbering, 1, 2, 3, 1.2 like that, that is also possible. But before that, if it's a formal document, apart from numbering, you need a table of content as well. How do you do that? Go to the right place references, table of contents, click, done. Now suppose you do some editing later. For example, I added a page. The table of content is now outdated. So it is important to remember to update this before sending or printing this document. Finally, how do you get proper numbering? Go to home tab, make sure you have clicked on any of these headings. Then don't use the bullets numbering. Third one is what you need, multi-level list. And just click here, you get numbering. And of course, this numbering is intelligent. If you rearrange the document, the numbering obviously is going to change. So that's how you become more efficient in life. And finally, Word is not working in isolation. It integrates with many other products. Send to PPT is what I showed you already. 
add this button called send to PowerPoint, then it will create a PPT. Wherever there is heading 1 applied, it will become a new slide and whatever is heading 2, 3, 4 will become bullets. Zero effort, one click. Outlook already uses Word as an editor, you know that. But what is important to remember that all these features of Word which we just saw are available by and large in Outlook as well. So use them to your advantage. Sway is a part of Office 365 which allows you to create web pages. You provide the content and web pages created, designed and available for sharing. Zero programming. What is Word to do with it? If you have a Word document and you want to create a Sway page, you don't have to go to Sway. In Word itself, there is a menu called File and Transform. So if I click on Transform, this document will be converted to a web page. You can choose a design and it will just do the job for you. And finally, PDF documents can now be edited in Word. All of us think that PDF is read-only. That's not true. If you have Acrobat DC or the full version of Acrobat, then you can edit PDF. But now you can right click on a PDF file, Office 2016 onwards. Right click on a PDF file and say open with Word. You can edit a PDF file in Word now, which is very convenient. So this was a quick tour of how you can use Word more effectively. So thanks for watching and look at the other items in playlist and improve your efficiency while using Office 365. Cheers and take care.